Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be covering a exploit known as zone walking. Uh, this is different than a zone transfer, um, but they're both DNS attacks. Um, this topic was, or this video was inspired by the CTF challenge, Zoni. Uh, it was the final web challenge as part of Nolcon CTF, and the challenge author was uh, G. Haxold. Um, I really liked the challenge. Uh, it was an easy challenge if you knew what you were doing, uh, but I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but once you know what the trick is, uh, I'm pretty sure you could have solved this within five minutes uh, for some free points. And like I said, it was the hardest web challenge out there. Um, so really, it's just about knowing that technique. And uh, it's a pretty neat technique. Um, involves a DNS sec. And once you know what the trick is, it seems very obvious, uh, but which I think is fun. Um, there were two write-ups I found uh, related to this challenge. Uh, the first one was by Michael BB. Uh, Michael BB. Um, and they showed the DNS queries that they used to uncover that it was a... Um, they had an, an sec records that leaked to the next domain, um, and so I'll link this below. And then there was also a write-up by Spidey, um, scrolling up, and they also, again, they show all the dig commands they used. Um, so the quickest refresher on DNS, uh, the goal of DNS is just to resolve uh, host names into IP addresses. So if I do dig conrad.io, we can see the IP address of conrad.io is this value over here. Mm, technically there's two, but... Um, if you want to communicate with Conrad IO, this is the IP address you use. And, you know, there's all those analogies, like it's like a phone book, like you have someone's name and you want their uh, phone number. Um, very similar. Um, we can see dig also tells us uh, this is the TTL. So this is how long it'll be in the cache. If I rerun it, we can see now it's 10. Um, so it's gone down, you know, by 17 seconds or whatever. Uh, IN just stands for internet. This is a class. We can pretty much always ignore it. And this is the record type. So this is an A record. Um, there's other records. For example, if you wanted to email Conrad IO, you can say you want the MX records. And so if you were going to send an email to me, uh, you would see that it would be forwarded to Google and Google will receive the email and then I can access it through the Gmail suite. Um, there's also text records. Uh, this is just for to pin some information on a domain. Um, there's a bunch of fun stuff you can do with this. You can see at some point I did some Google site verification, um, but there's all the other stuff like SPF and other garbage you can put into a text record. Um, there's also IPv6 records in there, AAA or AAAA records. Um, I don't have that enabled, but um, if I did, uh, you would find them there. Um, and cool, that's DNS. Uh, because DNS is pretty fundamental to how we use the internet, uh, it is a, a juicy target for attackers. Um, one attack we can imagine is, let's say I do my banking on bank.com. Uh, so I type in bank.com into my browser uh, and the DNS is resolved to this. If an attacker is able to modify the message, for example, maybe they've compromised my router, um, they could modify this IP address to an IP address they control. Um, and uh, instead of bank.com, I go to their evil uh, website that has a web form that looks just like bank.com's login form, and they're able to harvest my credentials. Um, but there's a couple of things that make this attack a little bit more difficult. Uh, the first off is when the attacker sends me to the uh, spoofed IP address, um, this web server will not be able to produce a valid TLS certificate for bank.com. And so because of that, um, the, the hopefully everything would fail. Um, second off, uh, it used to be maybe like a long time ago, you could go to a coffee shop and they'd be using like open internet and maybe you could, you know, beat that DNS request race back uh, to the server. I think you also have to guess the session ID or something like that. Um, but nowadays, like for, at least for me, uh, if I connect to Wi-Fi, um, for the most part, it's all using WPA2, so it's going to be encrypted. Um, so they really have to attack the router or be, you know, somewhere on the middle. Um, there's also some other technologies, which we're not going to really talk about, but there's like also DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS, um, which we're going to kind of ignore. And you can use that as you communicate to the resolver. And so then it's kind of a harder man in the middle, depending on high up, how high up in the chain you are. Uh, but ignoring all that, uh, we can see why this attack could be bad. And there's still other ways it could be bad. It's not just HTTPS. Like you could imagine like, uh, uh, for example, like the email backbone still uses uh, DNS queries. And so uh, depending on how they do the TLS stuff, like maybe it's only encrypted and not authenticated, for example. Um, you know, or other services that aren't as strict about enforcing some sort of encrypted or authenticated communication, um, you would be able to, you know, siphon that data off somewhere else. Uh, and so a long time ago, people created DNSSEC and it does two different things, entity and integrity. Uh, so first, uh, when you get the response, um, you can be sure that it came from who you think it came from. So it came from the name server that you were trying to query. And so it's able to authenticate that. And also uh, the integrity, you're also sure that the records that are being sent are the correct records and they haven't been tampered with. Um, it doesn't encrypt your records. So if you're worried about, you know, if you go to a website, people can still see that DNS query um, if they have a sufficient man in the middle. Um, but you at least know that the results being returned to you are uh, from the right person or from the right server and have the right results. Uh, and the way DNSSEC does this is it actually just sits right on top of the rest of the DNS. Um, so if we actually do uh, Conrad.io, 
and we do DNSSEC, I think it's actually enabled by default for me, uh, DNSSEC, and we do trace, uh, we can see some of these records. Um, so uh, these are SIG records. So this is, the, again, the same sort of stuff. Let's use this one. Conrad AO, uh, 60 TTL, um, 60 TTL, uh, internet record, RR SIG. So this is resource record signature. Um, and uh, this is the results of that. And basically this is, one of these is the signature that signs and verifies that these records are correct. Um, and like I said, so DNS rec DNSSEC just sits right on top of the existing DNS. It's just new records. So it has good backwards compatibility. Like if you're, you have a client that doesn't know how to do DNSSEC, you don't have to worry. You can just use the existing A records. Uh, but if you don't do know DNSSEC, uh, you can look at this RR SIG records and we're gonna have to look at a couple other records. The, we're looking at the DS record and there's also a key record somewhere in there. Um, but looking at all those, uh, we can be sure that, again, we're talking to the right people and the requests are authenticated. Uh, as for how DNSSEC actually works, um, I found a really cool website called DNSViz, um, and you can just type in a domain and it'll show you all the DNS record, DNSSEC records for that domain. So we're looking at the DNS rec or DNSSEC records for Conrad.io. Um, so uh, DNSSEC, uh, it's, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it's, re it's really not too complex. Um, basically, there's two different keys. There's a zone signing key and a key signing key. Uh, the zone signing key is the key that signs all the different records. And again, we're just using, you know, public key encryption. You have a public key and a private key, um, and the private key is used to sign. So Conrad, I, we saw those A records earlier. Uh, it, the RRSIG has the signature for my A records, um, and it was signed by the zone signing key. Um, and there's also a start of authority, a text record, a name service record, name server record, and an uh, email record. Again, all of them are uniquely signed by the zone signing key. And once those are generated, uh, you can go into like offline mode. You just return that result. You don't have to sign. The DNS server does not sign every request uh, for the most part. Uh, we'll talk about some stuff later. Um, and like I said, uh, it's just using a zone signing key. And you can get that by querying the DNS key um, on the record, and it will give it to that. Uh, how can you trust that the DNS is returning the correct zone signing key that you use for verification, or that is where the key signing key comes in. Uh, and it's pretty similar to the TLS um, PKI, public key infrastructure, where we have a chain of certificates and they all sign off on each other. And you have the root certificate, which is pre-installed on all computers. Um, and so that you can verify through the chain that everything as is what it says it is. Uh, and so we have this key signing key. Um, there's one at the top. This signs this is a key signing key, which signs this key signing key. Um, and then from there, that signs the zone signing key. And so we know that all of these records are correct. And the initial key signing key uh, is pre-installed on all computers um, uh, as part of your DNS resolving uh, service, whatever you're using. Um, I think for Ubuntu, you use uh, systemd resolvedd. Um, and so that already has the initial root key. And so you can verify the whole chain. Um, anyways, uh, that's DNSSEC. Uh, so one surprisingly tricky thing is proving the non-existence of a record. Um, so earlier in our attack model, we were thinking about attackers trying to spoof a DNS record so that you go to a server um, that the attacker controls instead of the intended server. Uh, but attacker could also be interested in saying that a specific record doesn't exist. Um, so maybe they're just trying to denial a service or website, or maybe that they want to say that the DNSSEC records don't exist, in which case they hope that you'll fall back to uh, uh, the just or standard uh, DNS uh, records. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons why proving non-existence is difficult. Uh, first off, uh, there's just so much DNS traffic. Um, I think I saw online that there's over a trillion DNS queries made per day, uh, which is a lot. Uh, some of the servers receive over a million per second. Um, and so to do that, a, a million requests per second is basically you have to be a key value store. Like you can't be doing any inline cryptographic hashes or signing or anything like that. Like it just needs to be a straight key value lookup. Um, and so all these records, like if we have, if you ask for, you know, Conrad IO and it exists, it's very easy to return these pre-computed signed records. Um, but if we were to do like, you know, b.conradio or something like that, that doesn't exist. Um, one, DNS has to return something, but it's not going to sign a fake entry like it would have to have all the keys loaded um, each dns server would have to have these keys or each name server that can respond would have to have these keys you need a way to like in live rotate the keys like it's just very difficult um, and so the model that they ended up on in the initial version was these things called nsec records which are next secure records um, and the way they work is uh, in a zone file, so like the DNS entries for a particular domain, uh, let's say I have, I actually have on my domain, I have a subdomain called art and one called portfolio.conrad.io. Uh, what they decide to do is instead, if you were to request b.conrad.io, b, the name server would see that b.conrad.io does not exist, but it knows about the 
previous one and the next one uh, by alphabetical order, art and portfolio. And so what it'll do is it'll actually return the records for art.conrad and portfolio.conrad. Um, and that, and because it returns those two, uh, it signifies that there is no records in between art and portfolio. And so you can be sure that b.conrad.io does not exist. Um, you might think that maybe, you know, the DNS server could just, you know, at one time sign, you know, record does not exist and return that signed value. Uh, but the attacker could also just, you know, query a does not exist record, get that signed thing, and then just do a replay attack on that because it's not unique to anything. And so because the DNS server is returning the previous and before records, uh, this is where zone locking happens. Um, so you can imagine maybe I have some more like www.conrado and uh, I don't know, email. Um, you, you can imagine if I had all these domains, all an attacker would have to do is query a.conrad.io. Uh, I'm not really sure how this would go, but let's, let's just say actually they do b.conrad.io. They would get this domain and this domain. Um, and once they have those two, they just go to one past email.com. So let's just say they do f.conrad.io. They would get email and portfolio. And you can see they can just, by making a couple of different queries for domains that don't exist, um, they can quickly grab all the subdomains. Uh, so hugely powerful. And like I said, to do this, you just do NSEC queries. Unfortunately, the like I said, the challenge infrastructure is down, so we can't actually do this. And the servers I was looking at, none of them actually support this. Uh, they support the NSEC 3, uh, which we'll take a look at and see what that looks like. But uh, this was NSEC 1, and the NSEC actually stands for Next Secure. So you're getting the Next Secure record. Um, but uh, there are domains that support NSEC 3, which we'll look at. Um, so we can do dig example.com. We're going to do b.example.com. We're going to do a trace and DNSSEC. Uh, so when we do this, um, we will see that example.com is returning this record. Uh, and this is the NSEC 3 record. Um, and it says it is valid for these record types. And there exists a domain that exists at this hash. <laughs> um, and so this is most likely www or something like that. But what they're doing is they're hashing the subdomain so that you can't use it for leaking. Uh, what else is in this record? Uh, the way the hashing works is it is doing five rounds of SHA. So this specifies that it is using the standard algorithm. This is a opt-out, which we're not going to talk about. This is the number of rounds, and this is the salt that is being used. So instead of just returning the raw subdomains, like it used to be for just NSEC records, NSEC 3 now hashes it a couple times. Uh, since it's only five rounds and it has a salt, so you can't do a rainbow table, but you can still most likely brute force this pretty quickly, um, especially if you kind of know what subdomains you're looking for. Uh, this could go really fast. Um, but anyways, that's NSEC 3. Uh, so the for the original challenge, like I said, it was NSEC 1, so you could literally just query a fake domain, and it should return the previous and next domains, and from there you could find uh, that there was a there was a domain called hereistheflag.zoni.inu. So if you did, you know, f.zoni.inu, uh, you could look at the NSEC record, you would see this one, then you can ask for the text record, and you can get the flag. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, like I said, I don't think it works in the real world, though, um, because there's the NSEC 3 records. Uh, and it turns out there's even more than just NSEC3 records. So, uh, so I think I mentioned I installed DNSSEC on Conrad.io, and I was hoping that, um, you know, to use that as like a little test bed for all this stuff. But it turns out Route 53, um, the AWS uh, DNS servers, um, they actually do something different. So they're not using DNS uh, NSEC3. They're using NSEC1, but they're using a protocol called uh, Black Lies, and there's also one called White Lies. Um, and basically all it means is... Uh, the, there's implementation specific details, but basically they have the keys loaded on the DNS server and they do, they actually do the cryptographic stuff uh, live. Um, so they were able to sign a record for 0a conrad.io, and this basically means that a.conrad.io does not exist, and here's the signature for this fake domain. Um, so uh, another reason why zone walking probably isn't going to occur too much. I think the big DNS providers have just accepted that it's easier to sign in line so that you don't give any sort of info leak out. Um, but still cool. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So in the future, if you have a uh, DNS problem and you're supposed to be leaking some information, uh, zone walking is something else you can check. Just kind of check for a non-existent domain with DNSSEC and see if anything pops up. And, you know, maybe you'll get lucky and they'll, it'll leak a subdomain or something. But, but anyways, thanks again to NullSec for hosting. Thanks for G. Haxel uh, for writing the challenge. And I'll see you at the next ETF. Cheers.